I'd like to call to order the Committee of the Whole uh, uh, meeting for September 5th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Uh, attendance roll call. Alder Persons Wolf. Here. Hamill. Here. Terrence. Here. Kapusta is absent. Schrader. Here. Kubaki. Here. Madden. Here. We have a quorum present. Thank you. Statement of public notice. This meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Approval of the minutes from the Committee of the Whole of August 15th, 2023. Move to approve. Second. Any changes or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. New business, 2024 Capital Project Fund Budgets. Public Works and Development Division. Do you have anything new? Maybe we went through everything last week, right? Or last meeting, correct? Library. Britain. Well, didn't some of the parks get forwarded to this meeting? We did. Um, well, we can talk and we can discuss them again, actually. I just saw, I was just looking at the notes from last. Yeah, so we did talk. Um, why don't you just go over the changes that we did to, otherwise I can do it too. Um, so if I remember correctly, um, the Moreland Park Pavilion was moved one year, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to take out totally the trail, uh, that's the Martin Trail, both the study and the, the, the trail. Um, and then from my understanding, last one was Freedom and Schmidt, both of those tennis courts were removed as well. Correct. Okay, they were, they were totally removed, it wasn't moved to the next meeting? I thought I saw that. No, that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Maybe yeah. I mis no, um, misunderstood it. The the, mo the motion was to remove them. Uh, obviously, we, nothing's approved yet. So if you want to discuss something from there, you can. Uh, the rationale behind it um, be, be for those two parks mainly is because their neighbor. Well, we're trying to find. We're trying to free up some more mon money for roads. Um, in addition to that, um, those two parks, putting our resources into neighborhood parks, the committee felt. If they're going to stick anything into parks, there it should be in the parks that have parking and it can be used by the whole community versus um, relatively uh, well, their neighborhood parks, I guess. Okay, as long as we know, I just need to know what's going to happen with those uh, tennis courts. Okay. So we can. I mean, are, are they usable now? I mean, we need to. It's we. They're they're getting to the point. <clears throat> I'm not gonna. I would probably say a couple of years. They're past the point of being re repairable. I, I'm and you've seen them. <laughs> And I'm being very kinda, cautious in how you're saying it. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I mean, they are. They're they're really, really bad. So what happens is when they get to the point where they get pretty bad, we shut them down. Where you, they're will will be liable because they are beyond point of repair. So shutting them down means exactly what to the uh, ground that they're on. Well, you could do a couple things. So you could. You know, remove it totally and just let it go back to grass. You could do repairs as needed. Maybe you don't open it up as a tennis court anymore. Maybe it becomes just a, a court for people to use. But again, at some point too, the, the asphalt's really bad. The cracks are, I mean, if anyone's seen it, be well aware of it that it is. Um, so uh, other options, at some point we band aid as much as we can, but at some point it's gonna be past that. And then I would not recommend keeping it open to have uh, us knowingly know that we have courts with the cracks like that. So then I would suggest to DPW guys, we would just remove it and grow grass. Which at that point, when it gets to the point where we're going, it starts being a, where it becomes a hazard instead of just closing them, my recommendation will be come back at that point and remove it and turn it into green space. Okay, the- um, Can't cost. <laughs> I guess, I guess I have a dilemma with the prorating of these over the years and what we're doing with other parks and where we're putting the money and how we're using them. And the Muskego Park and Rec mission statement says the Muskego Parks and Rec Department is committed to meeting and current future needs offered by quality, safe, affordable programs uh, while stressing cooperation and collaboration with uh, Muskego and surrounding communities by providing safe, multiple use, aesthetically pleasing parks, open space, re related facilities, natural resources, uh, preservation. We are committed to serve, serving you better by effectively expanding our programs and facilities. 
And at the same time, this is actually doing the opposite. And, and the care for this has not been there and it's been neglected and, and each little area has uh, parks in it and, and there's reasons for it. And this is one of the older ones would be Schmidt Park. I don't know how old Freedom is, I forgot how I looked at it. Um, you know, Schmidt Park has been reduced. They, they put a prairie in there. At one time they wanted to take the swing sets and everything out of there. We had a fight to get that back in to the budget was years back. Um, so I, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, the care isn't there and that we're not effectively serving the community uh, because there are people in that area because there's no parking there and there's no restrooms there. Um, shouldn't be a reason not to support the park. Alderman Wolf, as you're aware, I mean, everything on our budget comes down to priorities. And I don't want to speak for the council, and I'm sure a number of them can, you know, share their views on it. But my, my interpretation of this is, you know, we since we have to make choices on where we allocate our money, we try to allocate it where it's going to have the greatest impact for the overall community. Um, and I, I can totally respect where you're coming from. You represent that area, and, and having a neighborhood park like that is a, is a, is a nice amenity. To it's have. an asset, yeah. It's a nice asset. Um, but it's one of the few, your, your district is one of the few that actually has a neighborhood park like that that's not more of a regional park. Um, district 5 and 6, I can't think of any that have neighborhood parks per se. Um, I guess if I went through, I don't think 4 does. I mean, you're, you're one of the few. Um, so I can understand where it's a nice thing, and if I were you, I'd be fighting for it as well, but um, I, I, I'm just looking at it overall from the community standpoint that if we're gonna invest some money, it's gotta be something that the, overall, that the whole community can use, and since there's such a lack of parking, if we even made that a destination, I think you guys would be complaining, your, your people would be complaining too, because now you'd have parking all over the streets in front of people's all, all houses. All parks so. complain though about parking. Look at, look at all of them have no parking signs around them yeah. now. You know, I mean, we, we build these so people come and then we tell them they can't park there. But I mean, it's well, just, I mean, it, it's just it, the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I understand and, that. And it wasn't his decision. I mean, we collectively decided to pull those. We talked about it last week, so I don't want you to take the fall for all of us. No, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying this to is explain. representing what we said during our last meeting. So, and one of them is technically split my district, your district now, and, and um, yeah, that kind of dollars for what serves a few thousand people in kind of a corner just doesn't seem like the wisest decision to invest in the park side. So, anyway. yeah, but then on the other hand, my dilemma with this is that we want to take an old police station and put $5 million into it and borrow money to do that. But we don't want to take care of what we can with landfill money for the community. Uh, we're putting that money elsewhere. We have in, in the past been putting it elsewhere and neglecting the, the, the uh, upkeep of it. And that's why we're at this point is because we've neglected the upkeep. This is not a, a, a new thing that these cracks just uh, appeared this year and we can't fix them. You know, I mean, and I understand the road program has always been on my list too. And I understand that it's a, it's a good priority. Uh, there's a lot of cracks in there too with stuff growing in between them and whatever, you know, and I did get a lot of kudos for uh, uh, great uh, comments. I should say for uh, Putting Kipling in they, they you know, that was uh, a big big uh, Road to go through in, in the early or the uh, entry parts of Muskego. So that's uh, I mean Those are things we do definitely need to do but at the same time I, I just don't think we should be neglecting Schmidt Park. It's it's a good little resource and uh the parking there, if you want to park, there's a lot of street parking, there's a dead end, there's enough to accommodate uh, people that use it. But once we put a prairie in, uh, it, it slowed up some of the usage there. So, you know, we, we keep we keep taking away from it. So that's just uh, my opinion on it. And like I said, if we're gonna borrow $5 million to build a community center and we have money coming in from a landfill, shame on us. The thought was to put a pickleball court in there your phone would be ringing off the hook with the number of cars parked in the area. Uh, again, priorities, uh, uh, it's still going to be a park, it's still going to be maintained, but it won't have the tennis courts. Well, we redid Hillendale and, and, and the bars there and our, the phones went off the hook because we have parking on the street there and now we have no parking signs. So, it, 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 you know, whatever. You know, I just think shame on us for neglecting it and not using the uh, community dollars that are available over the years from the landfill money, how all those available now. Right. Anything else? Any motions or any? Motions, not emotions. <laughs> <laughs> all right.
Thank you. I just I just want to make I'm, I'm glad we I brought this back up. It should have been brought up instead of me asking for it because it was you're it was correct. passed yeah. forward on the door. So just an off. You're, you're correct. I, I told you I would. Off center I, comment. Yeah. I, I, Not a big I, I deal. I apologize for that. I mean, we did talk about it so beforehand. Yes. Okay. No, I apologize. Not not a big deal. I just want to point it out. <clears throat> Library. Library. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. Let me just packet page. I think 34. I have the, well, you know what? It's page 34 of just the capital document, so I'm actually not confident. It is 34. Is it 34? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. I didn't want to reprint it for tonight, so. Okay. So, um, bathrooms, they are 23 years old, but have held up fairly well all things considered um, the toilets still flush and the sinks still turn on and off and so uh, in that way we're doing great um, but the reason why I am bringing this project to your attention to consider uh, is not because of their condition um, they're wearing like the wallpapers peeling thing the grouts getting gray but again they're they're functional in the exact way that matters uh, however, um, they aren't ADA accessible. The good news is that uh, the council approved the family restroom renovation last year. So we just took that project out to bid. So hopefully we'll get started on construction soon. So once that project is complete, we will have one restroom in the library that is ADA accessible. The rest of them, though, are still um, at 1991 standards. The state is currently at 2010. And while it is good that we will have one restroom that is ADA accessible, I think the thing that I want this council to think about, if not this year, then to keep in mind for the future is that our library had about 115,000 people come through the library last year. Admittedly, not all of them maybe use the restrooms, but if you look at a seven, eight year trend, we're almost at about 800,000 people coming through over those past eight years. They're commercial uh, facilities, but um, we probably should have more than one ADA accessible restroom. We're gonna have anywhere from, you know, Girl Scout troops meeting, senior groups meeting, um, HOAs meeting, but anywhere from 10 people to our larger events that may have up to 200. And if you think about how many legal accessible parking spots you need um, in a building our size, a 40,000 square foot building uh, with about 170 parking spots, they say uh, the law says four. Um, so I do think it is at least worth uh, considering at some point, if not this year, then in the future, uh, making sure that more than one accessible restroom is you know, in this uh, public government building. The, I've really thought about this project a lot because uh, one of the, the things I was thinking about is does it have to be a full renovation, right, in order to make them fully accessible? Because once you do start to make adjustments to the restrooms, the safe harbor law ends and then you have to make it fully accessible. And so I was looking at all of the projects that it would take, um, the list is right there. Uh, about three of them are, are fairly construction heavy. The accessible stalls, they look accessible if you go in, but according to the standards, they're actually too narrow for the maneuverability clearance that's necessary. The sinks look like they would have the proper knee clearance, but they're actually a bit too high. And the paper towel dispensers, they are sort of carved into the wall right now, but they're actually within the maneuverability clearance of the entryway. And so when you think about using a restroom, um, in all the ways that matter, the accessible stall, the ability to wash your hands and use soap, and the ability to use the paper towels and dry your hands, in, in all those ways, um, they're, they're not according to the accessible law. 
I, just like, want, I just want to be clear here, just because there's yeah. people watching at home. The bathrooms are to ADA accessibility from the time the building was built. So, so that, that, which, correct. Which so they're, they're at that compliant. time, there were wheelchairs, there were standards evolve, and they get more strength, especially government standards. And I'm not diminishing that, you know, there may, there may be more of a challenge than there would be under current standards. But yeah. people with disabilities can use the restrooms there. The standards now are higher than they were then. So I just want to be clear because I don't want people thinking that if you have a disability, you can't go to our library and use the facilities. That is not true. Some, they're just not at today's standards. C correct. Yeah. No, and thank you for that clarification. Yes, they're, they're not to the 2010 standards, but they were to the standards of when the library was built and the safe harbor law does legally create protections for us. So... Anyway, um, so yeah, so that, that's where we're at and the changes that we would have to make to those, they start to impact the walls and start to impact the, the flooring, which is why I think it would make the most sense whenever the project is approved, whenever there is money to just complete the renovation. Because once you're starting to tear up the partitions, you're starting to break into the ceramic floor. When you're starting to move the partitions, you're starting to, you know, create holes in the wall. If you're talking about moving the paper towel dispenser and relocating it and uh, moving the sink, again, you're sort of getting into the wall area. So at that point, it's, it's almost at a full renovation. So whenever there is money, my recommendation, since they are 23 years old, and since they are you know, getting older, would be that whenever there's money to actually just do the renovation, so. I got a question. You, you got yeah. uh, 181,000 in here, and you have men's, women's staff room, 23 yep. year old. I, I, I just trying to clarify. Mm -hmm. We have one ADA bathroom already up to new standards. We will. So the council, okay, uh, the council. Okay, of, hang on. Yeah. So we have two other public restrooms in there besides that one, or is that one of them? I, I mean, so there's a men, there's a women, and there's a ADA or a, a, a family. Yep. Correct. Okay, and yep. then. So we want to do the, the the men and the women's one because we'll have the other one already done. And the renovation for staff restrooms that you were not talking at or we are talking at? It's included in there as well. Okay, I think so then that's where I come into price. What's the price of just the two ADAs? Did you have that broken down? The, the price of just the... The two the new... The two different without models? the staff ones. Without the staff one? Or you know, are the staff ones that bad that they need to be done ASAP as well? The, the staff one is in better condition. It's just also, again, it's not a matter of condition because they're they're doing okay. It's just a matter of me trying to, you know, state that none of them are up to the 2010. Right. You know, so well, the, the staff restroom is also We don't have enough. a breakdown of if we just did the two? I don't. Okay. I don't. Now, That's... what I will tell you, though, is that when... When I, when I broke out the family restroom from the rest of these restrooms, because originally I looked at it, all the restrooms, and then I just decided to bring the family restroom last year because I thought it, it might be, you know, if we can't get everything through, at least, you know, there would be one, one that would be done. And when you look at the, the project becomes more expensive every time you chop it up into pieces for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's less appealing to bidders. We get less bidders as a result, the smaller the project is. Um, the other issue is you lose efficiencies. You know, Every time the contractor has to come back out for a new project, they're bringing out the dumpster again. It's just it just ends up costing more money. So, but I'm just um, looking at prioritizing. If 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 we look, even if it's year or two years or this year, yeah, do we want to break those two apart? Maybe we should have separate dollar amounts with that. Sure. To take yeah. a look. I, I don't know what the consensus is for anybody else. Well, if my we, suggestion was uh, again from last meeting is that uh, because the bathrooms are now ADA compliant, they do need some uh, uh, paint, some decorative wall coverings. Uh, we trim this back to maybe a ten thousand dollar figure to cover, uh, you know, various painting and updating, caulking and whatnot. And yeah. I'm sure they could cover that. Um, we are we are compliant, and as the mayor said, it, they are accessible. Uh, again, it's it's maybe a, a bit of a stretch uh, 
and we do have the family restaurant that is up to current standards. Yeah, and so I, I'm really grateful that the family restroom will be done, so that, that's gonna be huge. Um, and we are protected, you are correct. Um, the, the it, it certainly would be nice. I, I would take um, I would take the ten thousand if you're offering it right now, um, <laughs> because it would be nice to to get wallpaper, get the wallpaper out of the bathroom. Uh, I know that we would have to make sure that we were not doing construction related measures. Um, so removing the wallpaper, putting paint up, um, can't do anything um, that would be to anything related to plumbing, electrical construction, things like that. Um, otherwise we would, you know, run into breaking the safe harbor law, but, but yeah. So if the sink broke, let's say somebody sat on the sink and it broke and fell off the wall. Yeah. Couldn't you put it in higher to meet those guidelines? First of all, please don't sit on our sinks. <laughs> um, that's an interesting question, and I'm not familiar enough with that to comment. So, are there waivers for this? Like if you get damage or something? Um, that's what I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, it just doesn't make it doesn't make sense that if we want to, uh, you know, approach fixing some of the problems that. You can't just figure, you have to do, it's all or nothing, which right, makes no right, sense. Right, right, I was thinking about that. <laughs> that was, I was just thinking when she yeah. mentioned how we couldn't change anything. And I'm, and I'm not questioning, painting. just questioning her. I'm just I think it's, it up. it's big construction. I mean, if, if something goes wrong, like with a toilet or a sink, I think you can fix it without having to go, I think if it's construction on the entire thing, then you're looking at having to make it Yeah, all a remodel job rather than a fix You can always yeah. fix something, I think, that yeah. breaks. So I... I, I, I was going to. You guys talked about this last meeting. Correct. Okay. I had a schedule, and I had Brittany come, so she at least got to witness what was brought up. But it was brought. I had a schedule mainly because we were talking about public works and roads, and um, I, I believe it was Alderman Kabaki that came up with most of a, his an idea of how to free up more money for roads. So this got brought up ahead of time. Yeah, sorry. I tried to make all the meetings, but the dates changed, so yeah, I no, put my I, business trips around all that and. And it, and it, it was the wrong discussed out of, out of schedule, and I guess, yeah. you know, <laughs> but that's that's why we talked about this without going too far into detail, because she didn't even get to stand and defend herself. She just had to sit and watch everything get plucked away from her. So. <laughs> it made it sound so dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and I do understand there's lots of priorities. Um, you know, my job, obviously, is to look at the library's landscape and say, what is the greatest priority for the library? That doesn't mean it's necessarily the greatest priority for the city when you have to look at everything. Right, right. Um, so, but my job is to tell you what's up with the bathrooms. Right. And so I, now say, you know. I appreciate that viewpoint. So we, 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 this is coming out of landfill money. And if we don't do that, what are we, it's just so I understood, what were we proposing to do with that money? The, the idea is to be able to put more money towards roads. Okay, so we can use the landfill money for the roads then? This this type of land this part of the landfill yes there are okay. some things that we have to use for certain items this is not That's one of them there's nothing in the landfill contract that says we have to spend so much on library bathrooms so, so I I I'd you know, like to see a breakdown you don't have to do this if you want to wait till next year but I'd like to see a breakdown of the two bathrooms by themselves yeah um, as a presentation to us rather than uh, everything I mean yeah I it's, hate to say the staff ones are probably in way better condition and. That's probably where you could use the coat of paint, but uh, you know. Is the committee okay with leaving ten thousand or or whatever some dollar amount in there so we can paint? The the bathrooms do look bad with the peeling back wallpaper. I mean, you're, you're, well, it's only a matter of time before we start getting comments mm -hmm. on it. Before so. we do that, I, a quick question I have is, and, and I'm not going to suggest they do this, but. Is it something that DPW can paint? I mean, they're not big. I mean, it, it, I don't know. Very well possible, but we need even we need money in there for paint or something. Right, right. So, and that's, yeah, know, I mean, a dollar amount, but I'm just asking if that's something they could. We, we could probably, you know, without breaking our capital budget, put five or ten thousand dollars in there, and it should cover it. And whatever we don't spend, we'll come back for next year's capital budget. No, I have no problem with sure. that. Okay. All right. Next item. All right. Uh, page 35, the uh, library parking lot lights are starting to rust. I will just, if it's okay, hand these out. You, I only have one copy, color and cost money. So you can just pa pass it down, please. Um, so they're rusting. 
the good news is they lasted uh, 23 years, right? So that's that's a good run. Um, so we didn't redo, we didn't repaint those a few years back when we repainted all the other poles. We we we're, neglected. We're the, in the process of doing the other poles on Changeo right now. Right now, but we did that before too already. I thought we did that this then too. This this way will probably work. I'm not sure what we did in the past. We just do the same powder coat paint type thing. Yeah, so that, that's my recommendation. Um, these are already LED converted. We converted those a while back. It would be cheaper to um, use the method that uh, Scott and Ryan and DPW already identified to remove them. DPW said they would do that. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, remove it, sandblast it, powder coat them, and bring them back, and that would, um, you know, give their life expectancy another 20 or so years according to the company. Um, and of course, the goal is to do that before it rusts through. Right now, there are no holes, but you know we want to take care of that before the holes come in, and then it becomes a more expensive project. So that's the first part of um, this request. And then the second part is the safety railing, which I'm going to pass this along as well. Uh, there is a safety railing that is along the side entrance off of Parkland and it's protecting against about a five to six foot drop, which is doesn't seem like a lot, but frankly, as I age, I become less bouncy, and it seems like I miss one step, and it ruins me completely. So, um, you know, it's enough of a drop where we want to warn pedestrians and uh, cars that it's there so that they don't, you know, go to the right or go to the left. And... So is that set in concrete or? Uh, it's set in concrete, yeah. So that could be sandblasted on site? Well, so they said that they would remove it. They said they would remove it from the concrete. They would sandblast it, powder coat it. They would put some aluminum feet on the bottom of the poles where it's rusting the most because, you know, the salt hits into it and, um, and that will okay. pr prevent it. Okay. And then they'll reinstall it. Okay. And I did look at other costs like what would would it be cheaper to actually just replace it with an aluminum fence or a steel fence uh and the answer was it would be cheaper to sandblast and powder coat it so um are any of those railings rusted through they're not but for what it's worth what the company told me was they were more worried about this railing at this exact moment than the lampposts in terms of get getting getting ready to to rot out so okay is this cost comparable to what we're spending on per pole on a Jane's Hill? Same company, right? It, it, it should be. They, uh, it's the same company. I think they said about, it was like about 900 to 1,000 per pole. Does that sound familiar, Scott? Yep. So. Yeah, but the right. Consensus? Yeah. Yeah. You guys okay with this? Yeah. Anything else for me looking ahead beyond 2020? Uh, what's the, next year? 2024? 2025 and beyond are the other uh, items that I believe. You have a shed in there for 2025. What's, what's oh. to be stored in there? Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking about that. All yeah. my All my secrets are going to be stored uh -huh. there. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so... F fun, fun news about that shed, actually. It was in there because it was too late for me to change it, but um, plus I know I need some money, but um, I'm actually in conversations with the school district right now um, to see if their um, technical education unit can um, build the shed for us as a learning experience, and then they would move it on site. Um, we're looking for cold storage to answer your exact question, just because um, we don't have a lot of storage in our facility and things like shelving that doesn't require um, weather protection. It would be nice to move it into the shed. We have a community garden. It'd be nice to move some of that stuff outside of our storage so that we can not have to leap over chairs and duck under other things just to get to what we need. Um, so that cost was my general estimate for a shed. We, um, now that I've talked with the school district, um, there's no guarantees yet, but we're going to be in conversations about that. And if they can do that, then really the cost would be the materials that they would need to build the shed. And so I, I'm going to meet with them this fall and get um, an estimate uh, about what the cost is. And then if, if it all works out, the, the class will design the shed in the spring and then... Uh, start to work on it whenever the money is approved for the materials. Perfect. All yeah. right. Thank you.
Well, I would think that this is something we could probably, if you, if you, I'm talking for myself. No. 24, 24, 24, I mean, in, in 24, uh, I mean, you're talking 7,500 for someone to build a shed. If they can do that, and we're putting 10,000 in the in the paint, which we know is a lot, between what's left over, there might be, you might be able to get that, just come back to Rick and, and see what he says. I don't know, talk to him, see where you're at. Yes. I don't, you know, I'm saying with the price of paint, if you're putting 10,000 in the paint, there might be enough to cover that in, in the next year. Yeah, my, my thoughts are ever talk to the school and if we're just right. paying for materials we might just be able to take that out operating and not to worry about it at all so we'll see what about like a eagle scout project as well they were going to be on my list too i did reach out to some scouts because i have a couple of projects a couple of landscaping yeah. projects in case anyone's listening if anyone has an eagle scout um so yeah I'm, I'm looking into those guys as well but it would be exciting for the the students and it would be really cool to have something that the school students made so all right, thank you. Any other questions for Brittany before? All right, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to break into a public hearing that we're going to call. We're going to recess the committee to hold, jump to Common Council, do the public hearing, and then jump back if that's okay for everyone. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm putting committee to hold at recess at 6.03. And, and at this point, I'm going to put the Common Council meeting in recess and go back to the Committee of the Whole. So we stand in recess at 6.07 p.m. Resuming the Committee of the Whole. <laughs> Going on. Um, continuing on with new business 2024 capital projects or capital projects fund budgets. Um, information technology. Ms. Lott. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing the IT stuff is his. No, is he just not all company? of it. <laughs> just see there for in case we really have a bad reaction to a request. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, uh, do you know pages you're on? I am on page five. I'm in the beginning of the packet. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the fiber build out to the parks. This kind of goes along with our camera project that we've been doing since 2018. Um, what we're looking to do next year in 2024 is put a hardline connection from Spectrum into Park Arthur. This will serve a couple um, venues. It'll help with cameras. If they want to do a concession stand there in the near future, we'll have it for that. Also for the watering gear in those, in those parks, since we're putting a lot of money into the infrastructure in those parks, it'd be nice that we can monitor them from afar. So the 43,900 is the cost that Spectrum's going to charge us along with, I've got a, fi a firewall in there for security and some licensing costs. And um, I put the first year of billing in there just because it wasn't part of operational if it didn't get approved. Questions? Is this connected to the like city wide or is this just its own no no it comes back to the city okay got the it. cameras are in dispatch and okay. um a few staff members see you know look at them too dpw looks at them so it's like hardwired from the park directly correct to the city. Okay. yes so it's closed. and how are the cameras currently connected cameras are currently connected we've got moreland park is is hardwired i meant specifically this oh. location um the location oh no. park arthur is currently wireless okay. And why are we changing that? That was the plan originally, wasn't it? <laughs> that was the plan. Um, also in my memo that I gave to you guys, we kind of are putting a pause on the cameras for next year. We've always kind of been building them out year after year. Um, Motorola bought our current vendor, which means the camera prices is going up. They're also going to a subscription base per month per cam or per year per camera. So I'm trying to look at other avenues to save us some money moving forward. So, um, so we're kind of focusing on trying to build out what we can for the main parks in the area, and then we're going to focus on the the smaller parks. We still and that that the wireless still works. It still works. It still is functioning, and it will continue to function. However, um, Baycom, who's our provider for that, is saying we're starting to get saturated because we have about 86 cameras on that on that spectrum now, and it's on the 5.8 spectrum which means a lot of household items are getting on that spectrum, your internet of things, your Googles, your Alexas, your Wi-Fi. 
So if it's close to housing, it's getting it's getting saturated. So you're talking about the Wi-Fi ones. I'm talking about the Wi-Fi ones. The wireless. Yeah. The wireless. wireless. So everything now comes back to the, the tower at Mercury, and it beams back to us at City Hall. So if we go with the Spectrum deal, because yep. it's on fiber, we'll be able to, if we don't stay with Spectrum, we'll be able to change to somebody else on that fiber yes. line. Yes. We don't, it's our line, right? This would not be our the line. Equipment, this, oh, it's going to be their it's line? It's going to be their line, so we're sharing the cost of their line. This is very similar to what we just did in um, uh, Idle Isle this year. So we're, they're splitting the cost with us to put this hard line in. So again, we're at the, at the mercy of of them raising prices or whatever, just like we're at now with the, with the Wi-Fi. So what is the plan to do with the, the Wi-Fi ones then? I mean, uh, it doesn't sound like we want to keep them Wi-Fi. I am looking at different technologies um, right now. I haven't had a lot of time because this was kind of sprung on me in April. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of digging on it. Right now what I'm looking at doing is for the buildings that do have hard lines in them, I'm looking at shooting it back to the buildings so all the cameras would come back to like the shelter, and then they would come back to the city instead of beaming all of this just wirelessly across the city. Yeah, because we had to put those special antennas up or right. something, didn't we? Right. And there's, okay. Yeah, I guess it's, I was just looking if there's a solution, but if you haven't looked into it. Technology changes constantly, so. Uh, the yeah. hardwiring makes sense from my standpoint because the wireless, this happened to us at the school district, if certain wireless bands get over overused your technology and your equipment could be perfectly fine but it's not going to work because they're going to either the sec shuts down that band or it just you, they don't allow any more on it so you're kind of stuck with all these paperweights having a line a hard line going in there eliminates that so, future consideration in the future so what's the benefits then of sharing the line i mean other than cost but if there's a repair to be made they'll take care of that with for free of charge yep yes we're under contract it, it, it's their pipe um, I, I guess looking at it, it's their pipe and what they're feeding through it, it's our sink. And that's what you did, so school we can district? So swap, swap you, out the sink on the end. You, share, you had a shared thing with the school district? Well, the school, this was something different, but okay. it was wireless. And, you know, the problem with wireless is it's convenient, but, every, every, I mean, as more and more things go wireless, that whole space Everything's gets more wireless. crowded. So. <laughs> our current solution from our provider is was like an $80,000 uplift cost, and they would give us our own band, kind of like a U.S. cell band. A cellular band but then you've got to pay for that every year and you have to pay for cameras every year and your cap that's an ongoing cost where if we can get more of it in-house I think would be better off in the long run but I, I, I have to do some research I'm just wondering why we wouldn't want to own the lines I mean there's no benefit to that is that what you're telling me oh you like bear your own lines? just the cost of running your own lines would be astronomical a and I think I did that a couple years ago it was over like a 1.5 million yeah, insane. it was expensive it was yeah. expensive so yeah. this is this is like the intermedium. Where are they tied in at like Park Arthur? Is it out on college? Where is it, where are they pulling it from? They'll come off college right across from Idle. Yeah. So the one of the other advantages is Time Warner or Spectrum, I should say, has lines already running all right. over that they own. We're just going from our point to one of their existing lines. If we to to our own, we would have to run from there to one of our lines, which where the closest one is. Okay. Either back here or the library. Yeah, yeah, because that's why. Okay, so so the one did we already have Idle Isle. You said that was already was year, correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, and Barb, Moreland Park as well. Barb, you mentioned you're looking at other technologies. Yes, sir. Would that be a substitute for this? Um, it could be a substitute for this. I'm really looking at more of the wireless technologies locally within the site, or to beam it back again. But again, that cost, I'm, I'm finding out, is getting very costly as we move on. And who knows, maybe in two years there'll be something new and, and cool out there. I mean, there's mobile hotspots. We could, we could do cellular, but then it's every hotspot cost a month per cam camera. Okay. So you, it, it's just going to grow. So I'm trying to do my due diligence and, and get you guys a good um, project We're trying plan. to get rid of the monthly costs. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we own the cameras currently. Correct. And the towers. Okay. But Correct. we don't own the service. We own the service currently. Currently. We, we, everything we own, we own currently. The issue is, is Motorola bought out my company. They're going to start charging us for Motorola cameras, which are more expensive. Oh, I mean, if we went forward. With, Correct. So what we have now, we won't. There's no, what we have now is going to work. It's going to stay no until charge. it dies. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. I'm just trying to. Until the band gets overloaded. Yes. <laughs> I, th I thought you meant there's going to be upcoming charges from no. Motorola now. Okay. Not yet. No. <laughs> 
Right. That good? All right. Good yeah. with this? Yeah. Okay. Page six, um, website provider. This one came about as um, the mayor always asks us to look for cost savings as we try and do every year. And our website provider was one of those cost savings that I think we could get a better bang for our buck with a different provider. So I'm asking for $26,970 to switch our web page provider for next year. We are currently with Civic Systems. The new one would be revised. Um, I reached out to the city of Waukesha because they just switched. The savings is tremendous, I think, for a year. I think the mayor would agree with that. It's substantial. Oh, I mean, it goes from... 17 to about down to four, which is a mm -hmm. small chunk of change. But you have to do the upfront charges to get... We have to do the upfront charges, and then the only caveat with this is I will work with the company. I got to give our old provider 60 days notice, and that's due in March, so just be aware. Is that a yearly contract, or, or is there... Yep. Because we've got to look for a, a certain payback to, to spend the 26000 um, right? This, this, what's in here for the thirty six? I guaranteed that for three years. So that cost won't rise for three years in operational. Okay. Okay. Um, page seven is the public side infrastructure at the library. Um, for those of you who do not know, at the library we run two networks. We run a city staff network and we, we run a public side network. The public side network services the Wi-Fi out there and all the public computers and the OPAC machines or the, or the card catalog machines that the um, citizens use to look up books. That infrastructure has its own little, we'll say, closet and own gear. That gear was put in in 2014 and I'm asking for a refresh because it's getting kind of old can't do much with it anymore. So the 18,700 will do a new server for me, a couple new switches and some licensing. And it should go for another seven. So how long is licensing good for? That's a one-time cost because it's just really my VMware stuff, so. Until you decide to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then lastly for this year, I've got page eight, which is disaster recovery offsite backups. Through my years here, I've been trying to get a better disaster recovery program for the city. And this last year I was talking to the school district to see if we can partner with them and I can put some gear over there. So our backups would go to the school first and if that didn't work, go to the cloud. The problem is, is I need a little funds, some funds to do some investigation for some licensing and some gear if needed to put over there. So that's what I'm asking for, to get us started. Questions? What are you Questions? using now? What are we using now? <laughs> Basically, it's, it's uh, hard drives that are swapped out weekly. Okay, you taking them home? Yeah, I take them home, which isn't best practice. <laughs> That's it's why I don't a, want to have that responsibility. It's sticky notes just uh, well, <laughs> stay. put it offsite. Is that your offsite is taking it home? Is yeah, right now that's all I've got. So it's all in one building? Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then the eighteen thousand dollars is probably not too bad, right? It's, no. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> okay. That's all I have for next year. Do you guys have any questions regarding twenty five and beyond right away? No, I'm not scaring you. I'm just asking. <laughs> but it, it, it is a five-year capital plan, so we should discuss <laughs> things more than just this year. Taking, yes. Do you All need right. Of course, this Thanks. stuff just changes. It does so change fast. constantly. I mean, even the ransomware software, that's going to change between now and 2025. And the, and the ransomware was, yeah. I went to a demo, and I have to reach out to some other municipalities um, and I want to see what happens when we do our penetration audit here in the fall, because that may not be a need. That was just kind of one of those, hey, it's cool, it's out here, but I don't know that we're going to need it. I want to wait to, for our audit to come back. Okay. Subscription-based services for cameras seems to be the trend of the future. We're taking mm -hmm. a meeting tomorrow specifically about the things in the police department. And then they get you on the, the forever train. Yeah. How will your department be impacted by what the audit suggests as far as cloud-based 
whatever's. That's the first I heard of it tonight. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have to ask Sharon the specifics okay. and we'll have to work on it. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Okay, yeah. we'll figure it out. The only cloud-based thing we have right now is our email, so okay. it's not too bad. Okay, thanks, Barb. You don't need it up here? <laughs> Thank you. Go. Chief, how are you doing? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Fons is with me. Sergeant Jeff Monreal is going to come have a seat, and Sergeant Brian Pellock. Sergeant page 17. Say that again. Page 17. Page 17. Sergeant Jeff Monreal is my lead firearms instructor. Uh, and uh, Sergeant Brian Pellock is the, my senior member on the skit team, which you're going to see a couple of those. Uh, first and foremost, thank you again for your continued support of the police department. Uh, we truly do appreciate it. My requests for 2024 are in order of press in order of priority. So you can take a look at the beginning and the end, and you can kind of uh, nod and wink when we're, we're going through this. Uh, first off, body-worn cameras, you guys already approved that for last year and it was just broken up out of a number of years, much like Barb was just talking about in terms of they get you on the hook and you're going to end up paying the subscription fee as we go. Any questions on body-worn cameras? Uh, just as a side note, they're going really well. The fleet camera system that we purchased as part of this is still, we're waiting for install. There's a backlog on it. Uh, but once we get that, it's all going to be, and we've transitioned everything to evidence-based storage like we talked about last year. I got a question real quick. Does yes. this scale with the number of officers? So let's say we added two new guys, two new positions. Does your need for this increase? It, it may increase. Uh, right now we're offsetting because uh, actually Sergeant Brian Pellock, we got a little bit of a, a grant that's helping us with some of that stuff. So I'm not seeing a need to increase it. So I've kept it the same. Uh, if our officers increase or our number of cameras increase or so, vehicles. So currently every everybody that's on patrol has a camera on them? Yes, sir. Okay. Questions on the cameras? Uh, the first ask, and again, an order of priority is our cross match system. It's approximately 10 years old. And there's our fingerprint machine, and it's the only one that we have, and it's the one that transmits every single arrest, and all the data goes to the state, and we just need to make sure that that's up and running and, and functioning. Questions on the cross mask machine? How long do they last? It's approximately 10 years, okay. like what we've been dealing with. Standard, okay. <laughs> What is it? Does the new one do anything different that the old one didn't? It takes fingerprints yeah. uh, digitally. We still have the backup way uh, in case we ever need it with ink. Uh, however, this is a system. Let's say that again, sir. I was going to ask what happened to the ink and paper. Uh, we still have the ink and paper if you really truly want that, but uh, the state takes them all digitally, and then that's the way we're required to do that in addition to palm prints and everything else that we do as part of the booking process. They still take, if you need fingerprints for backgrounds, they'll and do them for your citizens. And some of the fingerprints that state mandated for some, for some arrests that you make, you have to get fingerprints and photographs. And just like for perspective as well, our previous machine, you couldn't take palm prints. The, the machine that's now 10 years old, you could take palm prints so the technology is continuing to evolve in advance. Okay, thanks. That answered my question. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, next is a, an additional squad radio uh, throughout the course of time, just like what you're talking about, our fleet has increased and we want to make sure that there, there's a squad radio in every single vehicle that we have. And how we increase fleet is usually uh, if we, we basically don't sell off another vehicle. It's not like we're purchasing. We just hang on to it, repurpose it, and we want to make sure that we have those assets available. So this is like a spare? Correct. Skit vest is on the next docket. This is something that I come back to routinely. Uh, uh, Skit is suburban critical incident team. They're expensive. Uh, it's the full body armor and it goes up through the neck, through the groin, and all of the rifle protected plates that all of our combined operators have. They do have an expiration on them. That's where we're coming in and asking for uh, funds to purchase those. Questions? How many is this by? This is two this year, correct, Sergeant Pollock? Okay, thank you. When they expire, what do they do with them? We actually repurpose that. Well, we put them in the squads uh, just in case we need them. We don't want them avail, you know, like on a regular call, so to speak, but it is a higher level of protection and they are expensive. Mm -hmm. I would still trust it if you track uh, 
you know, those type of things, but there's, there's liabilities and those type of things that are go a long way. But if I was on a specific call, I would rather have an expired vest than no vest. Seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. okay. They're also not one size fit all. I don't think I could fit in his vest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. Well, you probably could. <laughs> or if I it's easier than he could fit in yours. <laughs> <laughs> you could live in it. <laughs> Next is uh, skip headsets. And like headsets, it, it may seem like, but it's the communication tool that they use on a tactical team to talk back and forth. And it's also something that actually protects their ears while they're going through and firing all these different weapons. So this is, oh, this is replacements. Again, how many are, do you do? Uh, I believe it's 10, Sergeant Pellick, that we're asking for. This is for seven. Seven. And it looks like you don't, is that looking to replace them in the next five years? No, these are these are good for uh, the ones we currently are using are about ten years old, uh, but they're truly getting past their operating period where we have to consistently send them back. Every time we send them back, it's additional funding that we have to pay to do that. So you guys only have a total quantity of seven of them, then? That's it. We have yes. Okay. We have seven. All right, moving on, this one may need just some explanation. Currently in the city of Muskego, this is just part of our drive to continue to keep going forward and being the go-to agency in Southeast Wisconsin. We're one of the only departments our size that currently we all own our own firearms. That is an issue when it comes to if our firearms are ever used in the commission of even a self-defense or a deadly force situation, that now becomes a piece of evidence and we need to make sure that we collect it and we don't have a replacement to give to them. This is a kind of a technology or a strategy shift in terms of the department, a one-time purchase, we're gonna buy all new firearms and we went through a vendor basically so that we're firing all the same type of gun, the same type of ammunition, the same type of training, and ultimately, if you can think about the problems that we have, we have Glocks, Smiths, Springsfields, all these type of things that cause issues. Now we're going to be able to make sure that the, all the armorers are done the same, uh, we'll develop an inventory over time, and ultimately we're taking that responsibility and actually worked out with some of the stuff with the union contract in terms of reimbursement for officers' guns and those type of things that the city's taking on uh, the, the firearm. Optics specifically is the next generation of where firearms is going, and it's going to significantly increase our capacity for uh, accuracy when it comes to using, utilizing deadly force. So this is from for everybody will have all new weapons. Yes, sir. And then I'm looking down the road here. What's the, there's gotta be some type of more money coming for this. I mean, what, what, what are you guys thinking? I, was, I, was say, it's not only I mean, you're gonna have more replace, I mean, other than adding new people on, replacements only, and stuff. It's not only for firearms, it's also for the optic and for the holster, so that, that oh, okay. is more than just the firearm? Correct. Uh, and as far as replacement cost, uh, this is built into the operational piece of our budget. If a new officer comes and those type of things, we're not issuing a brand now if a new officer comes on board because we've been transitioning, yes, they're going to get a new firearm. But if I have an officer that's here for a year, now it's our firearm, it goes into the inventory, it's going to be checked out by an armor and a firearms instructor and it'll be issued to the new officer. Uh, when they come in there, depending on replacement so, and those types so of things. So all these these weapons will be, when they when off duty, they go back into the station then? Is that what it is? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. Well, and, and no. you would have the ability to take it home, depending on how our policy is going to be written. Okay. Got it. All right. And I think the other part you touched on is as they add officers, they're going to be absorbing the new officer firearms under their operating budget, but they can't That's absorb $65,000 all at once because they're doing a switch over. We started doing that in the last year in anticipation of this. So several of the new officers, we've been buying them out of our operating cost. But again, with the mayor's strategy, it makes a lot more sense for the city totally of Muskego to try to transition things to capital as opposed to in the operational because we have a little bit more funding in that Does category. this include any spares? It does include spares. Oh, yeah. we can do any. Uh, um, and for that reason too, we need to have spares. They break. Right. Uh, God forbid we don't want to take one into evidence, but that, that does happen, it does occur, and we need to make sure that the, the officer gets a new replacement weapon immediately. It makes good sense to support one weapon. One armor. I makes agree. Sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Which jumps into the right, the next thing, 
when we started, all of us here, there was three different calibers of ammunition, as crazy as that sounds, because we were allowed to pick our own handgun. So we had 45, 40, and nine mil. Uh, and now we're transitioning 100% to nine mil. I came to you a couple of years ago and we did a bulk purchase. We moved it from operating to capital. Now, because of this train changeover, it's gonna, we're gonna burn through some ammo because we have some training that we have to do uh, with that. Sergeant Monreal has done a bit of analysis. Here's what I will tell you from even a couple of years ago, we're still getting pallets of ammo delivered because the supply chain is so backed up. We anticipate going into an election year uh, it, it could be a problem again. I would rather be able to purchase it in a bulk up front uh, and then hang on and manage that inventory as it comes down the pipe. Uh, and that's the purpose for, we're gonna train more, but I don't think we as a city or a police department, it's a failure on our part if we have to cancel training because we don't have the resources available. So you you, you did the bulk buy, that was gonna be my question, you kind of touched <clears> on it. Um, we have leftover yet on stuff that we're not going to use? Oh, we're going to use it, Alderman Wolf. I mean, you're using it for training then? Correct, correct. There's different, we have training ammo and then we have duty ammo. Okay. Uh, we're still receiving shipments of some of this training ammo as we go, but ultimately with our new building, we have the ability to store it safely uh, and be able to keep it. And quite frankly, you know that ammunition is only going to go up in price, so why not store it, have it as it's coming in piecemeal, because Several years ago, there were times when we had to like watch where we were training. And I'm not just saying watch in terms of being diligent uh, of like canceling or cutting our firearms training because we didn't have the ammunition to, to do the training. And those bulk purchases were for the nine millimeter that we're transitioning to now. Oh, not okay. Other not other rounds. Okay. That, no, that was, I guess mil. you asked, that's my question. Okay. Okay. That, that's good. And just, just. How much did ammo go up since last bulk purchase? Off the top of your head, like 10%, 20%, 50%? Yeah, so we're under, we're under government contract, um, so we get it at a, a, a cheaper rate, government does, but um, yeah, it, it's gone up significant. And then our duty ammo is not under government contract, um, so we have to go through a different distributor because of the type of round that we picked. Um, they still give us a little bit of break, but it's it's gone up significantly. So you, can, you get duty ammo, or you get training ammo at a government co contract. What's well, a can't, different But different you can't ammo? get it through uh, hollow versus full metal jacket. No, um, you can't get the other one? It's a different okay. distributor. But you can't get a government contract on it? No, they don't. It's not a government contract pricing, but they do give us at a significantly reduced rate. Seems but thankfully, we don't use a lot of duty ammo, and yes, I don't true. want to. <laughs> yes. Good. If you, and that part is different. Yes. I sincerely don't. We change it out periodically just to make sure that we don't have a bunch of older ammunition that sits in and gets recycled in and out of your firearm from time to time. Yeah, I was going to ask, does that stuff expire at all? or? It, as long as we're making sure that it's in a safe and it dry and it, we're keeping it out of the elements, which we're doing, mm -hmm. and we have the space. Okay. And it's not made in Turkey. <laughs> it's a thing. Questions on <laughs> ammo, optics, <laughs> firearms, plant, the plan, the strategy? Okay. All right, next brings us to a couple that are going to be related. Uh, laser radar units, these are the handhelds. I want to make sure that you, if you've seen us at, at any of the public events, you've seen us on bicycles, you've seen UTVs. Uh, in case you haven't heard, you guys have all get these complaints. The number one complaint I get is about speed enforcement uh, in and around uh, the area. And I want to make uh, speed enforcement a priority for 2024. Part of that is to give the handheld units, not just the ones that plug in, maybe they're on a bicycle, maybe they're on the side of the road, and just give officers more options on what we can use uh, moving forward. Again, I gotta ask, how many How many are you looking to get? Two. Two? And they're, they're rechargeable? That's, you just plug them in and recharge them, that's what they are? Uh, Sergeant Linkowitz, he's our, like, kind of our traffic guy, if you will, he pulled the, the data and they're, they're rechargeable so you don't have to be sitting plugged into a, a vehicle. Do you still use conventional radar or is everything laser? We have conventional radar and it's like in the vehicles in the front and back for the moving and all those type of things. But then obviously the guns are very helpful when the road is busier and then also allows us to secrete a little bit more. Not that we, presence was our number one goal of increasing this year, that we're trying to be sneaky about it, but it's it's difficult. If you've been on Hillendale, and that's where a lot of complaints just came this week, 
because of the rope, like we can, we can go into the driveway, but then you have to kind of angle your stuff, and this gives us another opportunity to do those things. Any other questions? Even though it's not in the same priority, I'm just going to cover it. Radar signs are something that also, I think, Mr. Mayor, you commented on social media today. I'm not, I'm not a fan of putting signs up everywhere, but the, I will tell you, I caught myself speeding on Bay Lane uh, with my the own signs that we put up. Uh, so it is a detractor, and it was something that I paid attention to going to football practice. Uh, and I'd like to target a, a couple of key areas where you get your more significant issues. Uh, Bay Lane, if you've seen them there, they're on Bay Lane, they're on Hillendale, they are on Test Corners. I have a, a donation from the National Night Out Committee that is going to donate a set of these as well. Uh, and my next places are going to be Woods and McShane, and obviously that's something that we can discuss. What These are super expensive. However, what they do do to you is we've had these complaints on Hillendale. We had a fatal accident uh, there. We pulled the data today, which I shared with our staff, uh, which keeps it all the time. And we're able to give real-time information up to the date where we are in terms of percentile and speed uh, and excessive speed uh, warnings when it comes to that. And it is an effective tool and helps with the neighbors, which I'm sure will be good with you guys. But this is an investment for the future. We just need to be strategic and we'll replace those and make sure that they don't walk off. So then you would have records that show 12 people were speeding on Tuesday night between 5 and 9 p.m.? We have that record. Okay, cool. Because I was going to be like, does it even help? But if you've got the data that then... It, it actually, the ones that we're looking at, because of course it's, it's like you go to one-stop shop, it's like all traffic solutions, and it's Bluetooth, and we can get it to the phone. We have temporary signs that we put up. These are more permanent that Scott and DPW and Ryan have really helped us with, and we've targeted specifically Bay Lane and Hillendale and Test Corners previously, but you know uh, Woods Road being there's no stop signs, and uh, that would be one that I'd be very interested in. McShane is also another one that I'm interested in in terms of uh, some of the others. If we pulled the community, I bet you everyone one would want them on their street. Does does the data allow you to, or can it pull out the kids throwing, I mean, literally kids <laughs> do this. They, they stand in front of them and throw pitches <laughs> and time their pitches. So does it, it, is there a way of detecting there, There's that? a setting on it. It doesn't pick up, like the lowest speed example when we pulled it today was 10 miles an hour. So they set a minimum bar okay. of like what it picks up. So it doesn't know a baseball from a car, essentially. I, not necessarily, no. But I will tell you there was, with this accident, that this fatal crash that just occurred, it did pick up the, the outlier of, of that speed. Around that time frame, there's two cars that are going 86 miles an hour. Wow. And likely that's one of the one, and we talked about the speed and the reckless driving and possibly alcohol were contributing factors in that crash. Are these units going to be able to be secured? We're going to secure them, and obviously we've had a couple of sign thefts recently, and we need to get creative on how to make sure either a GPS tag or something so that if it becomes an issue, but they're, they're, we, we, they're super expensive, and I want to make sure they're either insured or that they're locked and not able to be taken off with a socket wrench. So you said he stole the digital signs? Yes, two of them. Oh, really? Wow. I always got to put a camera on there. Where's IT when you need them? <laughs> <laughs> any, any more questions? On, and again, yep. periodically, I'm going to probably try to come like once a year just to kind of increase it. And it, National Night Out Committee has agreed to purchase another set. So um, this is just collaboratively working together to solve problems. All right, the next one, Alderman Kubaki, you hit me up on this the last time we were here, rifle and scopes. All right. <laughs> I may have to turn it over to Sergeant Monreal, but what we're looking for is a capability, and a capability specific to the car. Yes, we have sniper rifles that are for specific uh, trained snipers when they're out on the road. Our concern is there's been several examples over the past year of kind of that intermediate or kind of lengthy shot that's not a sniper rifle, but we needed that for the active shooter type scenario. The two long shots that I can think of off the top of my head are in impro, and then also in the long hallways at the school district. If you had an active shooter at one end of the building, you wouldn't be able to take that shot because of preclusion uh, in terms of like other people in the area, but with this and an optic mounted sight that we're looking at putting at two, one in you know the different cars, so that you could have that capability if the need should arise to have a little bit more of a length. Did I explain it right, Sarge? Yes. 
Yes, it's expensive. Yes, sir. You know, but this is something that we're looking to add a capability to our arsenal. Thoughts, comments? These are two rifles. Two rifles. Does everyone get trained on that then, or just certain no, people? No, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, training. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a training nightmare to try to keep everyone up and up to date and current on that. Um, so it's going to be uh, specifically for any firearms instructor, uh, current SCIT people, or retired SCIT people. And by that, it'll be about 12 to 15 people that will get trained on this. Have to do mm -hmm. annual training. Does Multiple skid, different shifts. Does the skid team have weapons similar to this? If they're on the uh, sniper team, their skip rifles that they have are not geared towards like that the the longer shot, so to speak. It, it is more uh, set up for room clearing and those type of things. Yes, they have the capability, but the distance is not necessarily there. Questions? All right. All right. My my last two. All right, so I am asking for decor, and you're you're gonna you guys are gonna hit me up and say, well, why that? Well, here's the deal with the old police department, the new police department, and he's already grinning at me on this one. Uh, our operating budget to just try to make sure that things are updated in the police department. When we show for culture, we bring a ton of people into that police department. When we show to new recruitment and retention officers, they come in there, some of our stuff just needs to be updated. Now, I will agree with you, the downstairs basement, if you remember a couple of years ago, laundry room, all that, we, we didn't get any bids because it was a smaller project, so it's still on hold. We just painted and we cleaned it up and we were making do. With this, I'm asking for just a little bit of starter funds. I went to Inpro and that was their uh, nod and wink traditional um, amount that they basically gave a bid for to, to try to update with some photography, with some things that can showcase our officers a little bit more. So that's what I'm asking for, for decor. So where are you gonna place this stuff? It's gonna go throughout the building and we actually have it in phases from the basement to the upstairs, those type of things in, in terms of showing off both what the officers are doing and also from uh, the nature of in and around Muskego and your community. And you're, you're getting photos taken and framed? I would like to. Okay. Uh, if you look at our police department, I'm just not a fan that you only get your picture on the wall if you're a dog or a chief. Uh, and I think that we need to celebrate our officers a little former bit more chief. and staff. Oh yeah, former, former chief. chief. <laughs> Which could be arranged this evening. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> you know, the dilemma I have with this is that we didn't want to get to the library anything. And it's coming out of landfill funds, and we don't want to do anything with the par two parks that are in question. It's coming out of landfill funds, and this is an extra six thousand dollars for fluff. Well, we gave the, we gave the library ten. I mean, it makes sense. I understand 10. what you're saying. We gave the library ten to paint. We're giving him six to paint for, for decor. Well, I understand. I understand. I, I, and I understand what, what you guys are coming from. It's nice to have other pictures and stuff that come from, but that's just. I, I have a hard time extra with. I mean, we're, we give you a lot of stuff all the time. Yes, you do. And this is just a little extra. I guess I look at this as a recruiting and retention tool as well. I think uh, it's a good pat on the back, and it's nice to have when new recruits come in to see what's happening in Muskego and see the, uh, I guess, the showcasing yeah, officers. I, you had mentioned Impro in here. What, what was that part? That part, they're actually going to create it for you? or the, They were the ones that created the, the phasing and the bids. Um, that That's where we came up with the dollar amount, okay. and that was their traditional bid. However, they basically kind of said, well, we can probably work with you, but I need a starter money. I, what I'm going to tell you is I'm, gonna, I'm going to do something, and it's just a matter, I didn't want to rob my operational budget um, to, to, to come up with something, and so I was asking for out of this. You don't have any painters fund. in the department? Say that again? You don't have anybody that can paint in the department? <laughs> Portraits? Portraits, yeah. Portraits. <laughs> artists? Artists, <laughs> Um <laughs> You know, I was just, I, this is difficult for me, but showing a little bit of pride in your department, it's, it's a good thing. It, it, the recruiting thing. And, and the recruiting it, side of it, I think is, is huge. All right. All right, lastly, this is one that uh, I'm, I'm earmarking this. We actually received two bids. 
I know it seems like a lot, but we talked about this in the past. Uh, there, we, I'm asking for fencing for the back parking lot, um, but there's also two bids, and like, and it's a little bit creative. And I apologize about being vague, but I'm looking to get the money, and then we'll, we will discuss exactly what we're going to do. Is is to secure an area of the the police department employee parking lot. Uh, and you know, like one of them that covers the generator and then the other one actually kind of cuts off the through affair back there. If you're not aware of it, we've had several employees that have been approached and, and uh, going to their cars at the end of their shifts or during their shifts. Uh, and if you can go to the Appleton Police Department, they actually had a, a deadly force incident, uh, which occurred like after shift, you know, going to their personal vehicles. It is one of those things and it adds a little bit of what we call curtilage or distance. If we were to have critical incidents here, uh, that would give us a little bit of space to push back. Obviously, if you're paid attention, Attorney Warchel, you park over on our lot on purpose on court night because we've had individuals that have approached some of our city personnel afterwards and that would be an option. My, my priority would be uh, this, even the $60,000 if approved would be to, to like, come before you and go, okay, here's what the plans are. Here's where we're really leaning towards. That's not enough for every single employee, but I'm more focused on my second shifters that are leaving at 11 and my night shifters that are coming in at 11 uh, to make sure that they're not being approached. It's happened at least a handful of times since I've been chief. And then the Appleton Police Department, again, had a deadly force incident uh, upon the end of their shift. This is a, a gated fence? A gated fence. And then it ties into the security system for the access control. Is that kind of the plan? Yeah, that's that would be the pl well. Both of them again. One of the plans is if you if you're familiar with our back lot where the generator is, it would enclose that whole area where we have a, the secure sally port where we bring in people. And another plan was to go kind of uh, between the old police department and the new police department, kind of cut that and bring it around. But that then that has thoroughfare questions, all that. I'm not a huge fan of having our emergency doors open and there's people walking back and forth, uh, you know, in that capacity, but that's a discussion for a later date. At this point, I'm looking for, for money to, and again, it's a conversation with Scott, it's a conversation with all of you to, to at least start the ball rolling. When I, I just if you clarify something, you said the old police station? I, I, I missed something in between when you're talking about the fence. The, the roadway goes through on the north end of the building, you can go from the front, you, essentially you can go from Racine to right, right. your Drive. So they talk about that area, who is trying so to find like some way of blocking that off, half, which... I mean, ideas, it doesn't, that's not what he's proposing. So but, I wouldn't be able to drive in on the backside and get over here to City no, Hall? No, I, I, that was one of the, he confused you with, that was one of his thoughts, that got shut down, this is... Oh, correct. okay, I got gotcha. you, okay, that got shot Bro. down, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're just looking to fence in the back part, basically, right now. The back part or on the side of the building in some capacity so that we have secure parking for when we, we need it. Oh, so you're talking about maybe two fenced in areas is kind of... Well, it'd be one fenced in area. You took the bid, so... We essentially, I essentially got two options, and it, they both came in about the same price. And it just depends what option the council would be interested in, the city would be interested in, if we were to move forward with the project. So we just needed some baseline number to present. Tonight. Well, that's why I'm trying to figure out. If, you, if you're going to fence in an area across from the... They'll have to walk across to get to the fenced-in area. No, just so no it, uh, every okay. every fenced-in area would be attached to the building be in, attached. Some, in some capacity. Gotcha. Okay. Was well, this something Public Works could put in, or uh, we don't no. do fencing? Yeah, fencing's okay. a, an art. Good you know, the, the question I have is, where were you when we were doing the construction of this <laughs> building? Because that would have been perfect then, right? Well, and it part of sense. this came to, and we, we got a. Well, it makes sense. We you know, we got a quote unquote First Amendment audit a couple of years ago where a gentleman came through. And we passed, we shortly after that, we passed an ordinance making that area off limits to the public. Oh. Um, so this just kind of is the next step of that. And I can tell you even too, not just Attorney Orchard, but our municipal judge started utilizing our back parking lot too for the same issues because we've had some very unhappy customers lately. And it's just what's in the best interest for not just our employees, but the other city employees as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was just trying to get an understanding of how you wanted to do it. I'm not against it, so. You want to help put it in? All right. Any issues with this? Mm -hmm. Anything on the five year and beyond that you have questions on? How often do we do handheld radios? <laughs> 
Uh, they, how often are we doing handheld radios? Again, as technology evolves, um, f for example, we had a portable radio dispatch that I couldn't even tell how old it was. It stopped working, sent it in, and they said, no, you're done. It can't be repaired. I so probably about 10 years-ish okay. is would be, would be a good kickoff point. And I believe the last time our current system was purchased, I'd, I could get you an exact date, but it was probably 10, 15 years ago-ish. Okay. And I believe it has to do with the technology changes at the tower of like what we can all get. And we need, so we're earmarking because it's a lot of money to make sure that we're at least planning for it for the future. So the tin can string just is gone, huh? Say that again, all the tin them. can and string is just <laughs> gone. Okay, I got it. No, we need better rope. <laughs> Thicker rope. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. Oh. All right, continuing on. Moving on to the operating budget. Um, in front of you, um, you should have received a copy of the budget tonight. Um, and I'm just going to go and read my my uh, summary comments. Um, tonight, not really looking for any response, first initial parts into it. It is a living document, so it's going to be, um, we'll probably be making some small adjustments to it over the next few weeks. Um, and we'll bring those to you as forward as uh, we make those changes. Um, also, want to note that the um, um, special or the um, utility budgets will be coming forward next meeting. Um, I should be able to get an electronic. Okay. Okay. All right. So my summary comments for the 2024 proposed budget. Uh, last year, I pointed out that the way we fund local governments in Wisconsin was broken, and the way the way we rely on local property tax is not sustainable. This past summer, the legislature responded after a coordinated effort by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Many of my colleagues from other communities and myself pushed hard to for an increase in uh, state shared revenue. The uh, the legislature passed Act 12, which among many other things, dedicates 20% of the state sales tax to go to local government funding, commonly referred to as shared revenue. While this added, reven while this added revenue is welcome, shared revenue accounts for less than 5% of our budget and will only serve as a one to two year band-aid and not a long-term solution. Uh, to impact real change to the budget, uh, to budget issues local governments are facing, the state needs to relook at re-implementing a levy increase uh, floor to keep up with uh, uh, CPI and possibly look at a local sales tax solution to reduce local property tax. And I'm not talking about, I can get more into that later, but I, if they, I'm not advocating adding a new tax except for the fact that this new tax would possibly sub reduce the old tax, you kind of like if you collect that 500, you collect that million dollars, half of it has to go to reducing, you know, so just want to be clear on that. <laughs> That's just trying to just get new revenue. Um, to allow communities to compete for revenue by becoming more business friendly. As we continue to grow as a community, we need to continue to monitor the investments and in services we provide to the taxpayers. Those services, by and large, are a product of our hardworking employees. We need to continue to find ways to maintain our existing staff as well as recruit the best and brightest for open positions. This budget makes priority of those goals so we can maintain the image of being a great community to live and raise a family. This 2024 city budget is built upon council-defined budget goals with desired outcomes in the best interest of Muskego taxpayers, and the 2024 proposed budget is consistent with that measure. Based on the agreed-upon comprehensive goals of the Committee of the Whole, the balanced budget, as prepared by the department heads and I, is proposed to once again maintain a low mill rate of $3.80 per, per thousand which again is one of the lowest mill rates of any municipality in Waukesha County. This is the third year in a row of maintaining this low rate. Following are the 2024 comprehensive budget goals as approved by the Committee of the Whole. To apply net new growth as allowed per state levy limit, maintain high bond ratings, limit one-time funding sources, avoid deple depletion of special revenue funds, Recognize and respect the expertise of incumbent employees through competitive pay increases and benefit packages. Abide by the general operating fund balance policy. 
and budget goal setting as a collabor collaboration between the committee, the whole, mayor, and staff. The budget process. This evening, the Committee of the Whole received the 2024 proposed budget for initial review. We will, however, continue researching further budget adjustments as we go through this process. The goal is to have an approved budget on October 10th for a public hearing and budget adoption that evening. If there are any specific questions regarding any line item, I encourage council members to contact the respective department head in advance to discuss the items to aid in identifying the precise information desired. Significant changes from 2023 to 2024. Revenues. The proposed 2024 general fund budget reflects increases in shared revenue of 552, approximately $552,000 from the passing of Act 12. Investment earnings have well, we're budgeting an increase of $354,000 and a tax levy increase of $141,115 and is within the state levy limit. The additional funds will be utilized to offset expenditure increases in protected services, technology, human resources, employee pay scale adjustments, and merit increases. The added state shared revenue funding gives the City of Muskego just under $600,000 in new revenue from the state. Since this funding source is tied to sales tax, it will grow with the economy. In addition, our new net new construction has increased from about 0.86% last year to 1.61% this year, which allows for a levy increase of, and I need to add that dollar amount <laughs> in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, $140,115, $140, which I actually stated right. earlier. Expenditures. The proposed 2024 general fund expenditure budget is in balance with the proposed revenue budget, resulting in a 4.65% increase over 2023. In support of the goal to recognize and respect the expertise of incumbent employees, this budget reflects a recommended cost of living of adjustment of 2% in January and a 2% additional uh, in July pay for non-represented employees. The police union agreement is tentatively approved by the bargaining committee, union leadership, and it was just approved by membership this past weekend. This agreement is a... Three, th uh, a three-year agreement calls for following the following wage increases. For 2023, January 1st, 3%, July 1st, 1%. 2024, January 1st, 2%, July 2%. And 2025, January 2%, July 2%. Employee recruitment and retention is important to continuing our mission to serve our citizens, and as such, we want to make sure our employees are being compensated in a fair manner when compared to other communities. To ensure that we are, the, to ensure that we are, the HR department is in the process of conducting conducting a compensation study. Our goals are to adjust salary ranges and correct any positions whose salaries are out of our policy ranges, and to make sure job levels are equated to job duties. Due to the growth in the recreation department needs additional support carrying out needs to I'm sorry needs additional support carrying out the general office duties including answering phones registration park shelter rentals baseball field use uh, entry social media posting invoice billing uh, covering office when the staff are out in the field and more. We have included a part-time position to assist the recreation staff with these duties, allowing them to concentrate more on revenue generating programming. Finally, as discussed last fall with the 2023 budget, we have uh, projected a significant savings in our healthcare costs, which ultimately were never, which ultimately were never realized. We hit, so because of that, we have a $260,000 increase in the budgeted amount for healthcare insurance. However, it should be stated that our 2024 rates will have a 10% savings over our actual premiums. So um, just a little footnote, side note on that. Last year when we originally created the budget, we were, we were hoping to have a, a rather large health, health insurance savings. Um, as we went through the budget, we realized that that savings wasn't going to happen, um, but we were able to make, we, we switched carriers and we were able to um, have at least have a 0% increase 
um, with the hope of as we would move on with that carry, we'd have um, more um, experience levels that they would be able to uh, project some of that savings forward. Uh, today we are notified that even though most, in fact, every community out there is seeing double-digit increases, we're getting a double-digit decrease for over what we're paying now. Um, but in the budget portion, because we had budgeted a lower savings, um, It'll look like an increase. So I just wanted to explain that as a side note. Uh, these expenses, along with added costs for elections, fuel and utilities, building maintenance and cost increases, amount to the net expend expenditure increase of $790,000 for 2024. Taxes. Per the 2024 budget goals, the entire available net new growth is proposed to help fund increased expenditures within the general operating and debt, and debt service fund. Based upon assessor provided data, the net impact will again produce an estimated city tax rate of $3.80 per 1,000 of assessed value, the same rate as compared to the prior two years. Um, any initial questions you can ask? Otherwise, um, I encourage you to take time, go through the um, full budget that is in front of you. If you have specific questions, reach out to the department heads for that department. Um, or if you, if you want to ask me, I can get the information for you as well, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Any initial thoughts or questions? All right. Um, the, we talked about the um, water and sewer will be sent to you this week and brought forward for further discussion at the next cow. Um, any communications, miscellaneous business for the committee of the whole? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn the committee to whole would be in order. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned at six or seven oh two. Continuing on.